So today we're reading from the third canto, chapter one, text 21, and the chapter's entitled Questions by Vidura. Tatrata Shushava Sarit Vinishtim Banam Yata Vena Javani Samshayam Sanspadaya Dakta Matana Sochan Sarasvatim Pratyagi Yayatushnim Sarasvatim Prachag Iyaya Tushnim Tatrata Susrava Sarit Vinashtim Vanam Yata Vena Javani Samshayam Samspada Yadakta Matana Sochan Sarasvatim Pratyag Iyaya Tushnim Tatra, Tatra, there. Yeah. Atta, Atta, thereafter. thereafter. Susrava, heard. Sarit, Sarit. kinsman. Vinastim, all dead. dead. Vanam, Vanam, forest. forest. Yata, Yata. As. as. Sorry, as much. Venu Javani fired you to the bamboos. Samshayam friction when with one another. Samspastaya by violent passion. Dagdam burnt. Atta thus. Anusochan thinking. Sarasvatim, the river Sarasvati. Pratyak, westward. Iyaya, went. Tushnim, silently. Translation. At the place of pilgrimage at Prabhas, it came to his knowledge that all his relatives had died due to violent passion. Just as an entire forest burns due to fire produced by the friction of bamboos, after this he proceeded west, where the river Saraswati flows. Please repeat. At the place of pilgrimage at Prabhas, it came to his knowledge that all his relatives had died due to violent passion. Just as an entire forest burns due to fire produced by the friction of bamboos. After this, he proceeded west where the river Saraswati flows. Purport by his divine grace, Shila Prabhupada. Both the Kauravas and the Yadavas were relatives of Vidura, and Vidura heard of their extinction due to fratricidal war. The comparison of the friction of forest bamboos to that of passionate human societies is appropriate. The whole world is compared to a forest. At any moment, there may be a flare-up of fire in the forest due to friction. No one goes to the forest to set it on fire but due only to friction between bamboos, fire takes place and burns the entire forest. Similarly, in the greater forest of worldly transactions, the fire of war takes place because of the violent passion of the conditioned souls, illusioned by the external energy. Such a worldly fire can be extinguished only by the water of the mercy cloud of saints. 
just as a forest fire can be extinguished only by rains falling from a cloud. Translation again. At the place of pilgrimage at Probas, it came to his knowledge that all his relatives had died due to violent passion. Just as an entire forest burns due to fire produced by the friction of bamboos. After this, he proceeded west, where the river Sarasvati flows. So in the purport here, Srila Prabhupada mentions that both the Kauravas and the Yadavas um, 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 were relatives of Vidura, and, and this is talking about the fratricidal war. So this is two different um, battles that have been talked about here. One is the Battle of the Kauravas, and that's the War of Kurukshetra. And the next one is the Yadavas. And the Yadavas are the Yadavamsas. They're the Krishna's own family, and their extinction will be explained a bit later on. So first of all, we can talk a bit about the fratricidal war of the Kauravas. So when Vidura heard about this, Vidura, he would have been, he would have been very saddened, but he wouldn't have been surprised. Because actually, as soon as Duryodhan was born, Duryodhan, he, he brayed like an ass. And, and from that, Vidura, he was very intelligent. He said to Dhritarashtra, he said, you should kill this child, because this child is going to be the destruction of the whole Kuru dynasty. But of course, Dhritarashtra, he was too attached to his son, so, so he, he, um, he didn't do that. And we see, um, if, if you know the story of the Mahabharata, which most of you do, um, Dhritarashtra's older brother was, um, sorry, his younger brother was Pandu, and Dhritarashtra was the, old, was the oldest. And generally in the royal family, the oldest child becomes the king. But Dhritarashtra, he was blind from birth, so he was disqualified on that account. So Pandu, he, he took on um, being the king. But then Pandu died, and, um, and the next, um, Dhritarashtra was, was um, put, put in charge of the throne, but it was, it was known that in the future that the sons of Pandu, they would be the rightful heirs to the throne, especially Yudhisthira, because Yudhisthira was the eldest child. But because Dhritarashtra, he, also, he always held this resentment that um, he, should, he should be king and his, his children should be king as well after him. So he resented the Pandavas, even though the Pandavas, they were very, very gentle souls and very, um, very, very wonderful people. And, and we see that Duryodhan, he inherited this hatred from his father and this desire for the throne. And, and he was always plotting to um, get rid of the Pandavas in one way or another. But Vidura, Vidura, he saw all this. And Vidura, out, out of all of the um, Kuru dynasty, Vidura was the one who spoke up. Um, Bhishma, Drona, sometimes it spoke up, but they were also bought out because they were dependent very much on, on, the, um, on living due to the generosity of um, Dhritarashtra. So a lot of times they didn't say anything. But Vidura, Vidura, he spoke up. Like we see even um, when Draupadi was being disrobed, everybody was silent apart from Vidura. And Vidura, he was saying, you know, you, you, know, you, you reign in your son, you know? Can't you see what he's doing? But Dhritarashtra, he never did. And we see all through at their lives um, when the Pandavas got vanquished to the forest and um, so many plots were done against them. Dhritarashtra did nothing. And um, so, so war was inevitable, and, and everybody could see this. And, um, but Vidura was the only one who spoke up, but they wouldn't listen to him. And it came to the point, even as we see in the um, previous few verses to this, how um, when, when Vidura was speaking out, Duryodhan gets very angry, and he says, you throw him out of the palace with just his breath. And, and this is actually very, um, very shameful behavior because especially in Vedic culture, even you see in Indian culture, you, ne you never talk back to your elders. And especially who, someone who was in such a um, 
prime position and such a um, um, important position as Vidura, but um, he was insulted and, uh, uh, as always, Jutarasta didn't say anything. So then the war had to take place. And so while he's on pilgrimage, he hears about the, um, the destruction of the, um, of the Kaurava dynasty. But we see actually, even though Vidura, he, he, um, he never got treated so well, um, basically due to Duryodhana and, and from Dhritarashtra being under the control of uh, Duryodhana. But we see that Vidura, he's such a kind, wonderful soul. He didn't hold that against Dhritarashtra. When, when the battle had taken place and all the sons had died, after um, Vidura had been on pilgrimage, he went back to Hastinapur and he, he, um, he, he, he like, um, Vidura is not a, a sweet speaker. He's like, he speaks the truth, and uh, he doesn't sugarcoat his words. And he says to, he says to um, Dhritarashtra, so I just want to read what he says. It's actually really um, very wonderful. He says, please get out of here immediately. Do not delay. Just see how fear has overtaken you. Whoever is under the influence of eternal time must surrender his dear life and what to speak of others, such as wealth, honor, children, land, and home. Your father, brother, well wishes, and sons are all dead. Your body is now overtaken by invalidity and you are living in the house of others. Then he goes on to say to him, you're just like a household dog. You are eating the remnants of the foodstuffs sown by Bhima. And uh, he especially mentions Bhima because Bhima was the cause of the death of his sons, and rightfully so, because Bhima had taken vows as well um, on, the, uh, on the disrobing of Draupadi. He, he said he would break the thigh of Duryodhana and he would, he would open the chest of, of um, Dushishan and, and drink his blood. And when Shastras take vows, they, they, um, these are vows that aren't taken lightly. They're very, um, they're very, um, they mean what they say. So then, then the destruction of the Kuru dynasty took place, and we know the Battle of Kukshetra. Um, the Pandavas were protected by the Lord. And we see also, like I was reading last night, Prabhupada was saying, well, you know, these things happen that we can think, why did, why didn't Krishna come when Draupadi was being insulted? Why didn't Krishna come and why didn't he take action against the Kauravas? Was Krishna didn't really take action. And then again with the Pandavas, when they were treated badly, Prabhupada says, and what, why didn't Krishna take action then? Because they're his dear devotees. And even Krishna himself was insulted, but Krishna didn't take action either. And Prabhupada says the reason is because Krishna, he wanted to get everyone together to relieve the burden of the earth. He gathered all the 18 Akshahini divisions of the armies from around the world, all in one place, so at one time he can kill them all. So this is what happened. So Krishna, he achieves um, man, many things by his action. And then the next, the next um, fratricidal war, uh, well, battle more like it, is the, um, is the one of the Yadavas. So there's a there's one verse in the um, in the eleventh canto which says, Lord Krishna thought, no outside force can ever bring about the defeat of this family, the Yadu dynasty, whose members have always been fully surrendered to me, and are unrestricted in their opulence. But if I inspire quarrel within the dynasty that quarrel will act just like a fire created from the friction of bamboos in a grove. And then I shall achieve my real purpose and return to my abode. So um, just to recap a bit on the story of the um, Yadu dynasty and, and um, what led up to the fratricidal battle. So um, Krishna, Krishna um, when, when Krishna's devotees or when Krishna's family is involved, everything's done under Krishna's arrangement. So we see Krishna, he, he, um, he was thinking of a way to, um, as, he, as he's 
going to leave the planet soon. He wants to take the whole, take the Yadu dynasty with him. So as he says in this verse that no outside force can, can um, do that because they're very, very powerful. So then the story starts with um, the, the Yadava princes. There's, a, there's a, a group of sages, they come to um, Dwaraka and they're headed by Narad Muni. And the princes, they decide they're gonna play a prank on the, on the sages. So what they do, um, Krishna's son Samba, they dress him up in a sari and they put something under his cloth and they go to the sages. Oh, my dear sages, please can you tell me what, what is this um, princess going to have? Is she going to have a boy or a girl? And Narad Muni gets very angry and he says, this, the, the, um, what, will be, what will, will come out of his stomach will be an iron rod and this iron rod um, this iron club, it will be the destruction of the Yadu dynasty. And so when, when the Yadava princes, they heard this, they got very frightened because the sages are very, very powerful. So they went, they didn't go to Krishna because they were very embarrassed. They went to Maharaja Krasena and they, they, re, um, they related the story of what had happened. So what Maharaja Krasena did, he got this iron club and he had it ground up into powder and there was just a little um, iron piece of iron left, and he, he threw it into the ocean. But what happened was, um, due to the waves, the iron filings that came back onto the shore, and they, they um, lodged into the ground, and then these iron canes, they grew up from there. So then what happened? Um, the, um, the, the Yadavas, um, there's two types of people in the Yadu dynasty. One is Krishna's eternal associates. And his eternal associates, they stayed back in Dwarka. But then the demigods, they had taken birth in the Yadu dynasty. As, um, as if when, when we've read Krishna book, we read in the first chapter in the advent of Lord Krishna, when Mother Bhumi, she's, she's very distressed about the burden of the earth. And so she sees all the demoniac kings causing havoc. So then she goes to Lord Brahma, she takes the form of a cow, and with tears in her eyes, she's, she's speaking to Lord Brahma, and she's, she's telling him of the ca calamities that are going on on the earth. And Brahma's very distressed as well. So Brahma, he goes along with Bhumi, and all the demigods, they go to the uh, milk ocean, and they offer prayers, they pray, um, offer the Purusha Shukta to the Supreme Lord. And they don't hear anything, but then, from within the heart of Brahma, he gets a message from the Lord. And, and then from that message, he relates it to the other members of the, who are there, all the demigods. And he says, that I'm going to take birth on, on the earth soon, but I want all the demigods, I want you to take birth in the Yadu dynasty so you can help me. So, so the demigods, they took birth in the Yadu dynasty. And it was these demigods who actually, they were the ones who went to Prabhas. And it, was, it wasn't the eternal associates of the Lord. So when, um, when, the, um, yeah, when the Yadis were at Prabhas, the, um, Prabhas is a holy place of pilgrimage. They, um, they offered their obeisances and there were Brahmanas there. They, um, they gave in charity gold, ch uh, gold and cows and other stuff. And then also they offered prasad to the Brahmanas. So the Brahmanas, they partook in this prasadam. And then afterwards, uh, um, the Yadavas, with permission from the Brahmanas, they ate the remnants. But also, the Brahmanas gave them permission because they're Kshatriyas, and Kshatriyas are sometimes, they're, they're allowed to drink. They were allowed to partake in um, a liquor of rice wine. So when, when the um, Yadu, Yadavas, as with any intoxication, it actually made them very, um, you know, they lost their minds and then they started arguing and being very hurtful to one another. And, and, and then with this as well, then they started, the, they started fighting with each other with these, these metal rods. And then they ended up killing each other as well. So that was the, um, that was, and, and then from there, the demigods, they, um, Krishna, um, he arranged for them to go back to their positions of being demigods. In, in the positions that they were before they um, came into the Yodu dynasty. So that's the two fratricidal wars that took place. And then now it's saying here that the, um, 
the comparison of human society is, um, is with the friction of forest bamboos to that of the passionate human societies as appropriate. So in a forest of bamboos, the, the, um, the tops of the bamboos are very thin, and, and just a little bit of friction with these bamboos, it can cause massive big forest fires. And these forest fires, they can't be put out by fire engines or buckets of water. The only thing that can put out a forest fire is when the, cl when the clouds open up and the rain falls. So similarly, it's um, human, human society, is, it's, it's described as a blazing fire of material existence because it, even though no one goes looking for suffering, suffering is there for the living entities. Lord Nar I mean, Narad Muni, he says to Yudhisthira Maharaj, um, he says that the living entity is under the control of eternal time, of karma and guna, the three modes of nature. How can one in the jaws of a serpent protect others? So the living entity is in this material world and, and there's, so, there's uh, three, um, three miseries that are always affecting the living entity. There's an adibotic, adidivit, and an adiatmic. The, the sufferings caused by the uh, one's own mind and body, sufferings caused by other living entities, and sufferings caused by natural disasters. So the living entity is always suffering. And, and actually, we can see that so much now, like in the last few years, we can actually see how much suffering this world is going through. It seems like Kali Yuga has taken a few steps forward. Over the last few years, we know the world's been in lockdown. And through lockdown, this has caused intense suffering. People have lost their jobs. Um, there's been lots of suicides. There's been an increase in domestic violence, in child abuse, so many things. Like, we have no control in this world. When things are going to happen, they'll happen, and there's nothing we can do about it. And you just have to read the newspaper now, or look on the internet, and you see food prices going up, petrol prices are going up, um, energy prices are going up, and, and interest rates are going up as well. So the living entity, you know, there's all this, they don't want to suffer, but, but because they, they, their knowledge of God is, is, um, is practically zero, they, they don't know what's going on, but they're trying to be happy in this material world. But you have to be a, a mad person to, be, um, to try and be happy in this material world. Because you know, suffering's there throughout our lives, no matter how hard we try to be happy, we can get, we, we can get little bits of happiness. I mean, everything comes according to our karma. But then again, we're creating a future karma as well. This word karma, we see that the materialists that throw around this world word very easily, and they don't really know what it means. You know, if something, something bad happens, someone gets murdered, they'll say, oh, the karma will get them, but they don't know the intricate laws of karma that just every, every single action you do has a reaction. So, um, I mean, they know about, in this material world, you have the laws of the state, and, and most living entities, they try and follow the laws of the state. But even sometimes you can get around laws of the state. For instance, like something very simple like speeding. Speeding is illegal, but a, a, lot of, a lot of people like speeding. And you can get around things like that, like you can put on your app, your Waze app or whatever app you have, and you can sit and it'll tell you, okay, the, the police are 200 meters in front of you, there's a speed camera in front of you, you know, so you know, okay, I better be careful, I better slow down. So you can, you can like get around material laws sometimes. But with the spiritual laws, you can't, you just can't get around the material laws. You, you commit a sinful activity, you, you're going to get your reaction as well. And, and as the Bhagavad Gita tells us, that the greatest type of fear there is, is to fall down into the animal species. So then this, this fear and this, and this suffering is it, going on in all species of life. But when the, rain, when the spiritual master comes, when the devotees come, and, and like, like the forest fire, it can be put out through, um, through the rain. So by the rain of mercy of the devotees of the Lord, they can relieve the conditioned souls of their suffering. 
we see Vasudev Datta. He was a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya. And the Chaitanya Charitamrita, he, um, he sees the suffering of the living entities. And he says to Lord Chaitanya, my dear Lord, and all these living entities are suffering so much. So I beg you, my Lord, please you give me their suffering and please you take them all back to Godhead and I'll stay here and I'll suffer for the conditioned souls. So this is the mood of the devotee, that the devotee, it, he, he's not callous to the suffering of other living entities and he's not, he's not just caring about himself, but he cares for everybody. And we can see in, in the uh, example, well, our perfect example of our most beloved is Srila Prabhupada. We see how Srila Prabhupada, he came, and for the first year he came to um, America. He didn't meet with success, and he actually suffered so much. Um, even, uh, what's the name? Um, Vishaka Devi Dasi in her book, Five Years, Eleven Months, she says that at night time, Prabhupada, he suffered from night starvation. Prabhupada was really poor. He didn't, he didn't have much to eat. He could eat once a day, but, but um, that's how he had to live. And for one year, he, he had no one to help him. But there was um, one, one of his servants, I can't remember if it was Shutakuti or someone else, or it might have been Shamasanda, he was giving Prabhupada a massage um, years later, and he said, Prabhupada, I really wish I was there with you in this first year to help you when you was all alone. And Prabhupada said, I was never alone. My spiritual master was always with me. And so this is a pure devotee. He has such faith in Krishna, such faith in his spiritual master that whatever sufferings he has to undertake to help the conditioned souls, he, he'll do that. Um, So devotees, um, devotees always um, want to give out mercy to help people. Um, I, um, I read a story recently. There was one Sankirtan devotee in London, and she was going door to door uh, doing book distribution. And she went to this one big house, and she knocked on the door. And all in the inside, she could just hear shouting and shouting and telling her to go away. But something within her said, no, don't go, you know. So she carried on knocking on the door and she carried on hearing this, um, this shouting. And then finally, uh, the man came to the door and he, he saw what she was doing and then he started crying. And he said, you know what? I was actually just about to commit suicide. He said, my wife and my children, they've just, they just left me and I've got nothing to live for. And so this lady, this devotee, she started preaching to him and gave him a book and he started to feel better. And then after that, she kept in touch with him and he, he's doing really well. So devotees are like that. They, they go out, they give the mercy to the conditioned souls and they try and bring as many people as they can back to Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada said temples are bases where, we're, where we send out um, soldiers to fight against Maya. So like, if you, if, you know, I think a lot of older devotees here, they've been Sankirtan devotees in their younger years, and maybe some, there's still some Sankirtan devotees, and it's, it's, a very, um, it's a very heavy service, actually, to go out there six, seven days a week to be on the street, you know, seven, eight, nine hours every day. You're going out there and you, you're, you're fighting the illusory energy, you're fighting against the modes of nature, and, and you, you might be getting abused, you might, you know, you get many people saying no to you. But the, the Sankirtan devotees say they'll go out year after year because this is what Krishna wants. He wants us to go out there and preach and he wants us to bring as many souls back as possible. Because of this blazing fire of material existence, people are really, really suffering. And Krishna, when we read Prabhupada's books, we see that Krishna, he's always, always looking for an opportunity, even the slightest thing to see as devotional service so that he can bring a person on the path. Even I was reading in this book, um, When the Sun Shines, it's about Krishna consciousness in the UK. Um, and Prabhupada was saying, even if there's an ant on Krishna's garland, and the ant, it falls onto Krishna's feet. Krishna thinks, oh, my, my devotee is massaging my feet. So Krishna, he's always, he's always looking for the, the good in the living entity to, 
to come back to him. And, and Krishna, I mean, as much as we hold back from Krishna, Krishna, he won't force us because Krishna never forces love because love can't be forced. So on our, on our free will, he wants us to come, come back to him, but we, we, need to take the, we need to start taking the first step. That's why it's so important we do Harinam, we do book distribution, and even when guests come to the temple, it's really, really important that we treat them nicely and we, we greet them when they come. Not that we ignore them and, and walk straight past them, because this is, this is Radha Govardhandari's house, this is Srila Prabhupada's home, and we have to see them as guests, and, and we, can, we can try our best to bring them in closer and closer. They've made the step of coming to the temple, now we try and make them take the next step and know a lot more about Krishna consciousness as well. Um. Okay, so um, is there any questions or comments? No? Okay, thank you so much. And Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada.